Hi and welcome back to the channel. We're back in the van. We've got a little break now. We've done quite a few festivals already this year and we've got nothing planned until the end of August, which is next end of August, end of July, which is next week. So I've got a few little jobs I need to do before we get away. And one of them is a bit of maintenance on our Max Air fan. It's been in nearly two years now. You may recall last year we fitted a full seal to reduce the noise and the heat lost at winter. That's worked brilliantly. We're probably 10 months in now and I've started fitting these for other people when we go to shows and events. Um, not that I'm doing it for money, it's just do it for my friends. So <laughs> the people that can't get up on the roof themselves. But anyway, by the by, we've fitted quite a few because people have seen that video and, and thought that's a brilliant idea because they had the same problem as us really. And it was very noisy. And when you've got two, you've got double the noise. Also, a bit drafty as well. If you're sleeping under one, like we do at the back, it really does. You can feel the draft off here. So, if you've got a window slightly open anywhere in your van, you can feel the cold air rushing across you. Now, it's nice in the summer, but in the winter, it's a bit of a pain. So, we fitted the seals. The seals have been brilliant, and um, I would recommend to anybody using the max fans to fit them if you've got the same problem noise reduction brilliant absolutely brilliant because it's open on three sides as standard you are going to get all the road noise or wind noise by putting that little rubber in it just eliminates it you know i understand why max fan don't fit them there is regulations and rules out there but we just we always cook with the door open we always cook with the window open so it hasn't been a problem for us First things first, we need to take the fuse out. Now, I haven't got round to label of my board up yet. Um, something I've just realised. So, <laughs> it's a job I need to do. But, like any good electrician, I've got it wrote down on a piece of cardboard that I keep safe. <laughs> so, let's have a look. Our front fan is on the right hand side at the top. So, let's just pull that fuse. Now, that is safe to work on. The first part to remove is the fly insect screen. And that is just four of these twist clips. Well, that one's a little bit awkward because of the... I'm right-handed. I'm trying to do this left-handed while I hold the camera. <laughs> yeah, so, get that round to there. Do this one. To them out and that will just drop down out the way. I'm going to take this part of the fan off because I wiped one of the blades and well it's not clean either. I've given around the, ins the inside of here a wipe. I'm going to take that out and try and clean up what I can see above as well because looking in the back of there that looks this disgusting. So anyway let's give it a good clean. The next part of the job is to remove this little screw here, back it off just a tiny little bit, this little grub screw. That's a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. And you see on the side of the shaft, there's a little flat spot that sits up against that. So that's what we need to remove now. That really doesn't want to sit in there. Uh, I've got it in, but I'm just going to have to turn it slowly. Oh, there we go. So that's it. Quarter turn. And that's it. Off the shaft. There you can see the shaft. The flat side where the grub screw fits. That's the collar on the back of the fan. There you go. You wouldn't believe how long it's taken to get that off. So the Allen key that's there, we believe that grub screw is a 2.5. That is a 2.5 Allen key, but it took some time to work it in. So now I've got it in, I don't want to take it back out. I'm going to go and wash it as it is. Try and keep the bearing dry and uh, go from there because that was a nightmare to get off that shaft. 
Before we take these parts in to clean them, just a little word of warning. Don't use any really heavy acid type cleaners on these. All you want is hot soapy water and that is it. The manufacturers recommend hot soapy water so that's all we're going to be using. I do use some baby wipes but I also make sure that they've got no harmful products in them. Um, we do keep baby wipes in the van for just washing the dashboard, wiping down surfaces. They're antibacterial and there's nothing harmful in them. I use them on baby's asses for God's sake, you know. How toxic do they need to be for that? Well, thinking about it, yeah, they maybe do. Bad analogy. <laughs> but yeah, just check the products because if you use something that's um, acid based or acetone based, it may discolour the, uh, the plastic. It may start affecting the plastic as well, making it brittle. So just bear that in mind before you go rushing in. Just look at the products, look what's in them. Anyway, let's go get them washed. I think we'll leave that in there for a little while. Put a little bit more hot water on it. And uh, come back and hopefully things will have lifted off it. We'll give it a scrub as well, by the way. But... Yeah, you can see all the little bits on it. Anyway, we'll give it a... Give it a wash. That's it washed. And, uh, maybe not as washed as I wanted it to be. We'll go and give it another do. Happy days. And we'll let that drip dry there. Don't eat it, boo. I said, don't eat it, boo. <laughs> Good girl. We are just giving this good little wipe round with a wet wipe. Try and get as much grease and grime off as we can. Getting dizzy doing this. <gasps> Look at that. That is uh, minging. It is quite minging. <laughs> it's got two years of a sh grime up there, mind. So. We're just grubbing. Wet wipes and wiping everywhere we can touch, really. A lot of it's blind, but it is what it is. At least if we keep on top of it like this, it shouldn't get too dirty in the future. I think that's us. And I've picked the hottest day, well, one of the hottest days to do it. Uh, glasses are on because I can't see up there, so I'm blurred, blurred, <laughs> really blurred. Anyway, we'll crack on and we'll get this all washed off and put back together. I've cleaned half of it. I just want to show you the difference. Look at that. That is, that is the dirty side there. And that's what it should look like. Dirty, dirty van. <laughs> Obviously, um... The two years that we've had it, we've used it. We've never done any maintenance on the fan whatsoever. I suggest you maybe have a look at your own. Um, let me know if yours is any worse than this. <laughs> All right, job done. Once you've got the fan out, um, the blade, whatever you want to call it, it's time then to start looking at all the fixtures and fittings, make sure everything's secure and nothing's wore out. And when I say that, I'll show you exactly what I mean. We have installed this full seal. This is the winter seal. So the thing to do is just go around, make sure that's seated, 
and that hasn't moved in the whole time we've had it in. There's also a seal there, check that, check that one's good. The thing to do is work your way right around, make sure the seal is seated all the way. It's a little bit tight, but you can get your hand in there. Now this seal here, this seal here is the original seal that comes on the uh, actual kit. All you do, that is a little bit lower and it does leave a little gap. There's a gap there of about four or five mil. So when the roof's down, when everything's sealed up, there's still room for ventilation. Now, another thing to check, check all the nuts that hold the fan are secure. These screws are secure. And check the condition of these little bushes in here because when you take the lid up to fit the seal, these do pop out. So make sure they are seated properly. Make sure you put them back in correctly as well when you do that job. But it's something else to look at. Right, we've got a couple of little checks to do on the system now. So let's put our fuse back in. We should hear a little bleep. Can't bloody see it. There you go. Yep, we heard the bleep then. So that's that. So for me, the next thing is make sure everything works okay. So be careful because the fan is spinning. So what we want to do is make sure everything opens and closes and changes direction like it should. There you go. That's working fine. Now let's get the controller. Make sure this opens and closes properly. Let me just zoom out a little bit. So, just check everything is sitting where it should be. There's no stress or strain on any of these parts here. No cracks appearing in the top cover and then again just open it up watching how everything moves see if it was a bit jerky or a bit snappy maybe something isn't operating correctly and it could cause you problems in the future and that's where you'd need to start paying a bit more attention um, having a look at stuff but the motor's working fine all the brackets are fine that's running okay, nice and quiet. So, for me, that's the check over with. We've obviously cleaned everywhere, give it all a good wipe down. So, we can start building this back up now. Okay, let's take this fuse back out before we build it back up. When we put the fan back on, we need to push it all the way up to that circlip at the top. So let's try and slot this back in now. And that's it, push it all the way up. And then no more than quarter of a turn. Make sure it's secure. Then we'll put the insect screen back on. You just gotta get it up inside there first. Rotate it until everything lines up. Oops. Yeah, that's it. Fuse back in for the final time. The last test is to fire it up. And there you go. So we're going to turn it right up. Put it full through the full range of functions, which is reverse, intake, and outtake. Intake extract. <laughs> the 
that's perfect nice and clean fully checked out fully serviced I'm happy with that no complaints job done so the last little bit to do inside is the cowl I'll give everything a good wipe and make sure everything's nice and clean and dust free Once you've done all your inside checks, you need to come out and do an inspection on the outside. So one of the main things I look for is to make sure the integrity of the seal is still there. Obviously this sits and pools with water at, from time to time. Um, there is no way for it to go. It's kind of dammed in on three sides. Once we start going, the wind pushes it up and around. Main thing with your fan, keep it clean. So I come up here at least once a month and I wash my solar panels, I wash my roof, and it's pretty good order at the minute. I then check this main seal. As you can see there, it has started to, to like, leach out. I do plan on doing a job with that um, in the very near future. Check all the screws, make sure none of them are rusting. Check the rivet along the front, because that's where it's hinged. There's a couple of screws on the back that I check, make sure they're not loose. And uh, that's basically it really. I check for cracks and you know deep gouges, but there's nothing on there. So we've been lucky, we've hit no trees, we've hit no birds. Um, we did lose our Wi-Fi antenna on a, with a bird strike on the M4. But yeah, that's, that's all I look for to be honest. Not a lot to do with the outside. But if it breaks, this is where the water's going to come in. So just keep an eye on it. When you're doing your solar panels, when you're cleaning your roof, just give it a good once over. Keep an eye on it. But yeah. Got a job coming. Coming up on these. Because it hasn't leaked. Um, but I don't want to get to the point where it does leak. So we might just trim that off, reseal it, and actually seal over. And seal all these screw heads as well. Just see how we get on. Another part of the system that's overlooked is the controller. So we have rechargeable batteries in ours. And the reason behind that is because if you buy long life batteries, they're great for things that you use quite a lot of. If, if it was a TV controller, yeah, I would say put long life batteries in there. We use this very rarely. And to be honest with you, if you left batteries in there for too long, if they got damp, they would start to corrode and that corrosion can cause short circuits, it can damage the actual controller. So use rechargeable ones. They don't have to be too big either. The less the less you um the smaller the size of the battery because they come in different capacities. We use the smallest one in here and I think it's let me just have a quick look. Not got my eyes on here so it might be a bit hard to see. We can always edit this bit out can't we? These are 85 milliamp, so they will run out of charge quite quickly. So if you use them all the time, that is. But because we use these very, very little, they will last a good couple of months before they need charged. And because we're charging them and not buying new ones and throwing them away into landfills, we're doing our bit for the planet, aren't we? So, anyway. All good stuff. Battery levels. If you look at that, we're about ready to change that out anyway. So that's been in there three months, if a memory serves me right. So what I do, I have two controllers, one at the back and one at the front. I will change them both out today and put fresh batteries in them. Or I'll put them aside and charge them up. But yeah, something to consider. Look after your controller as well. Probably very expensive to replace. I'll have a look and see how much they cost. Last job done. Fresh batteries in both remotes. And that is us done now, I think. I think we've checked everything on the Max fan. I don't think there's anything left to do. But it, it's just, just one of them things, isn't it? We, we install stuff on our van and then we forget about it. When really, we should be looking after it. So hopefully, the things we've done today will prolong the life of our Max fans for a little bit longer. Get a few more years out of them. Anyway, end of another video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.
I'd like some feedback from you guys. I'd like to know whether you found this video helpful. Um, if you do, let me know. If you don't, let me know what I can do better to improve it. If you like it, I'm going to do more videos like this. Thanks for watching.